Okay, welcome to the Bears Hall of Discipline today. We are in the book of Acts, the New Testament book of Acts, chapter 22. Last time Paul the Apostle, impossible, true. <laughs> Talk about mission impossible, that's Paul. He had, he had a mission against the Romans which were oppressing the Jews. The Jews, or the, the religious, call them the religious donkeycrats. They were in religious, political offices, and they were wicked. They stood for Sodom and Gomorrah, for riots, for abortion, for sacrificing your children. They were, they were donkeycrats. They were, they were the liberals of that day. The religious donkeycrats oppose Paul to the death. And as I said, the Romans were oppressing the Jews and pretty much anybody else that opposed them. Paul had the mission impossible. And he was a, an apostle to them. He was taken captive, hostage, rescued, whatever you want to call it. Very bizarre scenario. And the scenario had to happen. A lot of times things happen to us and we don't really understand, but it has to do with getting us in the right place where God wants us to be. Eventually, as, is, as the clouds separate and the smoke moves aside we're going to see Paul the Apostle in Rome before Caesar and if this all wouldn't have happened that wouldn't have happened because God has ordained for Paul the Apostle to go and stand before Caesar so we kind of pick up from last time where Paul was taken hostage, rescued, and all the above. And now he's going to give a speech. He believes it will be helpful. But if a man does not turn to Christ of his own accord, you cannot preach to him, be a good boy, be a good girl, and 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 you'll get religion right that, that don't work you have to be born again because you admit you're a sinner and you turn to jesus christ you must repent and believe in jesus christ that's the only way but paul believes this is going to be of some help and uh so he's got to he's got to run the course here So Acts chapter 22, verse 1. Men and brethren, fathers, hear ye the defense which I make now unto you. And when all the people heard he spoke in the Hebrew tongue, they kept the more silence, and they said, he said to them, they basically said, okay, we'll listen. Paul says, okay, here it comes. I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. In other words, he was a, of the religion of that time. Um, very educated, but without the truth. He was very zealous of the law. He kept the law to the T, in their opinion. And he was very zealous towards God, as you all are this day, basically, is what he's saying to them. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest doth bear me witness, in all the estate of the elders, from whom also I receive letters, 
unto the brethren and went to Damascus to bring them which were bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. In other words, at some point in time, Paul was one of the donkey crats himself, given to evil, given to the LGBT and the Sodom and Gomorrah and the abortion movement and the wearing masks movement and the fake flu movement and the fake Chinese flu movement. He was part of all of that till he come to the knowledge of the truth and realized that's all a lie. That he must come before the feet of Jesus Christ and surrender. And he did that. And now he's preaching the truth that he once opposed. And so he tells him, I used to do that. I used to be a religious donkey crap. That's paraphrased, right? Okay. Paraphrased to our day and time so you can understand what I'm talking about. He was, he was a religious donkey crap. Now he is of the truth of Jesus Christ. He would be a true, uh, true God-fearing Christian Republican voting for right, for righteousness, for Bible in the schools, Bible in the government. Jesus Christ is the head of the world. Really, in, in fact, Jesus is the head of your country. Jesus is the boss. Okay, That's where Paul is now. That's, he's all for the faith of Jesus Christ. He's defending where he stands now. He's simply telling them where he came from. So he said, I was on a journey to Damascus to create havoc, perhaps start some riots with the, the BLM and all the, the liberal leftists creating chaos in their land. But God struck him off his horse. He said, that's not what I have for you. Following lies, deceit, deception, fear, fraud. No more, Paul. Time to come to the truth of Jesus Christ. The Lord knocked him off his horse. And a great light shone round about him. And he says, I fell into the ground and heard, heard clearly, powerfully, majestically, a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? If you persecute followers of Jesus Christ, you're persecuting Jesus Christ. And he will have his due. Understand that. And Paul said, I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. In other words, when you come to the Lord and the Lord has a, an encounter with you, you're not going to be able to explain that to other people. That's between you and Christ Jesus. So keep it to yourself. That's your little, your sweet little eternal pearl that Christ Jesus has given to you. Hold on to it tight. That's between you and him. So they didn't really hear the voice. They saw a bright light, but they didn't really understand the voice because the voice was between Jesus and him. And Paul said to the Lord, what shall I do? What do you wish me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise, go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of the things which thou is appointed for thou to do. God leads you one day at a time. If that aggravate, aggravates you, you better get over it because that's the way God works. He's not going to tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. He's going to show you how to walk the narrow road of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ today.
to do. And when I could not see for the glory that, of that light, in other words, he was blinded, so powerful, I was then led by hand by those with me, and I came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the religious of that land, a man well spoken of, notable, he came unto me and stood and said, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And in the same hour, I received my sight. Ananias said unto him, The God of our fathers has chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that the just one, Jesus Christ, and that thou shouldest hear the voice of the Lord with your own ears. For thou shalt be a witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And basically Paul's giving his spiritual testimony, testimony to people who he's hoping would hear and turn to Christ and have them end their foolishness. But salvation is a choice. You can't convince people of it. They have to make a choice in their heart. They have to be called by God. You must share. You need to share. But you can't convince people. Salvation is a choice. Each individual, every human being, must choose for their own will. I repent of my sin and I love Jesus Christ because I am a sinner. And if you're honest, you would say the same. You're a sinner. Nobody's perfect. Even when you come to Christ, we do bad things. And we need to repent. We need to have our feet washed spiritually. Our hands washed. Our eyes washed. Our ears washed. Have eye salve put on our eyes of the Holy Spirit. That's a choice. It's a narrow road and you must walk it. It's not a it's not a, a narrow bed that you lay on spiritually. It's a road, a narrow road that you must travel on spiritually. It doesn't mean I mean if you're bound to a bend, that's not the issue. The issue there's a spiritual journey that you must continue on in your own life that you must make the choice to do. A spiritual journey not a physical one a spiritual one and you must choose and now why tarryest arise and call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that your sins may be washed away so at this moment Paul came to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ being washed clean by the washing and renewing and regeneration of the Holy Spirit. He became a new creation as he called upon Jesus Christ to be forgiven of his sins and to receive Christ in his heart, as each and every one of us must do. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I saw a vision of the Lord. He's, he's sharing a very personal moment with the crowd. He believes that this will help to bring them to that point where they can make the right choice. The Lord appeared to Paul as he was praying in Jerusalem. And the Lord said unto him, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said unto the Lord, They know what I stand for, and they have imprisoned me and beaten me in every synagogue. Them
I believe thee, Lord. And yet my past follows me, <laughs> basically is what he's saying. And that there was a time when I persecuted your beloved people, Lord. I took part in the martyr of Stephen. I was there at his death. And yet the Lord had mercy on Paul the Apostle. But now he's called Saul. A slight name change. And now, and now he's going to relate this to something that the Lord shared with him of this is going to happen. And Paul now tells the crowd, The Lord said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far unto the Gentiles. Who's the Gentiles? That's most of us. That's me. That's you. We weren't born of 100% Jewish blood because in God's eyes, Jewish lives matter most. They're number one. The rest of us fall in second place. That's the Gentiles. That's a blessing to us, and the Jews hate that. But that's, that's light, okay? Just accept it. So Paul tells them, Lord told me that I'm going to share the word of Christ to the Gentiles. At this point, verse 22, there was a change in the crowd. Remember, it's the religious folk of that day. It'd be like if you stood in front of a bunch of Islamabubs and said, Islamabubs and, and uh, Allah and all that, that's a demon. You serve and worship a demon, okay? The Masons, they worship a demon. They're, they're, they're Islam. They worship a demon. The Donkeycrats, they follow a demon, okay? They're Satan worshipers. They tell men to get gender changes and become women. They told men to get married. Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah. They keep hammering that. That's the sin of the fallen angels. Well, that's demon worship. These people kept following a law that did not pertain because the Messiah of the world was right there and they rejected him. Paul is now declaring the Messiah was here physically, now he's here spiritually in the hearts of those that have chosen to repent and believe in Jesus Christ. This is what he's telling this crowd. And at this point, they're done listening to Paul. They said, <laughs> Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. Oh, really? He told you the truth, and now you, he gets the death penalty because he told the truth? What people should get the death, death penalty for, for is for lying, you know, for starting coups, for being treasonous to their own country. For betraying a good president, that's treason. Okay? That's a that's a coup. Fake elections, fake impeachments, fake, 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 lie, lie, lie. That's what the donkey grads do. That's what the godless of this world do. Because they worship the demon, they worship Satan. Satan does not want a godly man over the greatest nation in the world. So Satan's gist would be to pull him down. Because he might represent Jesus Christ to the nation and to the world. And a good leader is going to represent Jesus Christ to his nation and to the world. But Satan and the donkey crap, the religious, the liberals, they're going to hate him. They're going to hate him. And it's going to be a battle to the end because you represent Jesus Christ. That's what Paul was. He represented Jesus Christ to the liberals, to the, quote, donkey crats of that day. He represented truth to them, and they hated him for it, and they wanted to kill him. So they 
cried out, cast off their clothes, their big cloaks, threw dust in the earth, and once again, just like our liberals, they start riots. Because they didn't get their way, they hate what they hear, they weren't going to start a riot. So the chief captain, he grabs Paul, our brother, and they drug him off to the headquarters, to the castle. And they said he needs to be examined by scourging that we might know the truth. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto them, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? Uh, no, it's not lawful. That, that in of itself could bring the death penalty for them. He is a Roman. He is to be treated fairly and justly. And when the centurion heard this, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what you are doing with this man, for he is a Roman citizen. He is Jewish, but he's also a Roman citizen. He is born a free Roman citizen. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? And he said, Yes. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. But Paul said, Actually, I was freeborn. Then straightway they departed from him, which should have examined him. And the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman because he had bound him. And on the morrow, because he would have known the certainty wherefore he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priests and all their council to appear and brought Paul down and set him before them. So a great dissertation here. Paul exhorting his own brethren, mostly of Jewish descent, some Gentiles in the crowd, no doubt, Romans in the crowd, soldiers, And they're all there doing their jobs. And the religious folks were trying to stir up the crowd to create a riot, to create confusion and get their, get their way, you know. That's what riots do, that's all they do, create confusion. Riots, people get killed, hurt, kidnapped, raped, robbed. That's what riots do. Riots are godless. In Bible times, rioters got the death penalty. Because people get killed. And then the riot's over and there's just a lot of damage, destruction, hurt people, people that got raped, murdered, beaten, kidnapped. So on that day in the Roman Empire, there was a riot. Soldiers rode into the riot with horses and spears and swords with the cavalry right behind them and the soldiers pushing them through. They mowed down everybody. Riot over. All done. That's how they dealt with the riot problem. Okay. Acts chapter 22. It's pretty much a wrap today. If I could have you raise your bear paws out there and ask a few questions, I would. But we can't. So you just have to stay tuned till next time and hopefully we'll answer some of your questions. Or you can go backwards into our previous studies in the book of Acts. Or you could go way back to the last time we went through the, through the book of Acts as we covered this chapter, the book of Acts, and maybe some of your questions will get answered then. Anyway, from the Bears Hall of Discipline, the Bears Gym, our 
Bible Study Conference Center. I bid you Godspeed, God bless, and the name of Jesus Christ. Make the choices this week that would please Christ and draw you closer to Him. Honesty, truth, justice, and love, biblically by faith in Christ. God bless you, friends. See you next time. Bye-bye.